Good morning. I guess it feels like camp when I'm visiting and probably need to be paying attention better, huh? So this morning we are celebrating Camp Sunday, so we'd like to welcome you to our service this morning. It will look a little different and the kids are going to be an active part of the service as um, they don't know it yet, but they're going to help me with the message and they will be singing later on. So we look forward to that. I'd like to welcome the uh, listening audience as well on the radio and those who are watching via social media. We are glad that you joined us this morning. If you want to let us know that you're watching us, we'd appreciate some feedback from people and to hear who's watching out there. There are a lot of announcements this morning. If you would like um, the devotionals for March and April, or March, April, May for our daily bread, they are available on the table outside the main doors of the church. You can help yourself. This Wednesday, our meal will be chili, hot dogs, chips, nacho cheese, and dessert. Um, following this service, we will not have a middle service this morning. Um, instead, we will have our camp carnival that's going on, and we do the camp carnival to raise funds towards our camping ministry. And we will continue to have our camp carnival onto Wednesday night. We have about 30 kids that come on Wednesday nights, and I would say at least half of them do not come to our Sunday morning um, activities. So we thought we'd give those kiddos a chance to experience the Camp Carnival as well. If you notice, there's an insert in your bulletin. It is the seven words um, Lenten study that we are doing. It started on Ash Wednesday, but you can still join in. We'd love to have you join us on Wednesdays at 6.15 in the sanctuary. And that will go through the season. On Monday evening, there was about 60 people who went to the Coopers and sang to them. And the Coopers have included a thank you in our announcements. They say it warmed their hearts on a very chilly night. They've been so blessed to have you, their church family, walk with them through the cancer journey that Leanne and Jody have been on for the past two and a half years. Um, so thank you for joining us and please continue to hold them in your prayers. There is a schedule for Holy Week. There is another thank you um, from Helen, Dell, and Dolores Cross and Doreen Berkey for the um, Valentine gifts that were delivered. There's another thank you from the Coopers um, that they had sent out earlier, but we're reprinting that. And then you can see Grant and Brittany's address if you would like to send them a card of encouragement as well. And then today is Camp Sunday, so we want, we're doing it early this year. Usually we wait until about April to celebrate Camp Sunday, but this year camp looks a little different because of COVID. We have to make adjustments and changes. I'm just going to be honest with you, a lot of the camps are already full. But I want to encourage you to register your kids for camp yet. They may adjust that. Um, my camp usually has between 45 and 50 kids. I have 12 that are registered and they're calling it full. And I said I could have 12 kids from Millbank be there. So um, we need to do something with that. And she agrees with me. So I'm not sure how that's going to look at this point. I did talk to her about the idea of just doing a Millbank camp where we can bring all of the kids from Millbank from little on up and we can do camp together. 
And um, so I'm hoping that that door may open as a possibility and we can take all of our kids to camp. Because typically we send about 60 to 75 kids to church camp each year. And so, I mean, I think seriously our church could fill the camps that they offer. So we really want to do what we can to try and make that be an opportunity. Because our um, church is so generous with the camping program, our church pays two-thirds of the cost for camp. So cost should not hinder anyone from being able to go to camp. And then if you cannot afford camp, we have um, scholarship money set aside to pay for the total cost of camp. So if you are struggling with the idea of sending your kid to camp and don't have the money or the means, don't hesitate. We have the money available to help kids with that. Plus, you do not have to be a member of this church for us to pay that two-thirds. If your kid is going to a Methodist camp, we want to encourage that. So thank you as a church for being willing to support that camping ministry and you can see most of the information there in the announcements, or you can talk to me if you have questions. I also want to announce this morning that um, Lucy Armitage's daughter, Lorraine Nystrom, did pass away this last week. So we can hold Lucy and her family up in our prayers as she goes through that loss. She is in Minneapolis with her family right now, but she did say she will be back later this week, so we can hopefully find opportunities to love on, on Lucy. With that, it's such a bummer because we can't do the fun, like campy songs to shake hands or anything this morning. So instead, we will just start with our opening song, which is Days of Elijah. I invite you to stand up and join in singing.
Would you please join me in our responsive call to worship? God has set up camp in our hearts. In God's love, we find community. God has made community part of our nature. In God's love, we find peace. God gives us peace and a calling. In God's love, we find purpose. Please join me for our unison opening prayer. Gracious God, you are so good to us. Today we offer a prayer of thanksgiving for all of the blessings revealed to us through camping ministries. For your gift of time and the cycle of nature, for opportunities in the out of doors to reflect and to feel your presence very near to us. For rest and recreation, for the dedication of countless people who have supported this ministry through offerings of time and talent, builders, counselors, and instructors, for the gifts of all who create and maintain an environment of faithfulness and healing through their example at camp, for the blessings you make known to us through those who participate at camp, for the questions and discoveries, for the friendships and fun, for the music and stories, we give you thanks, O oh God. Amen. You may be seated. For the Lenten season, we are going to enjoy some videos that prepare our hearts in this season, and then we will also light some candles this morning. Would you please bow your heads and join me in prayer this morning? Father God, we just thank you that you meet us here, that we can come find your presence among us and that we can worship you today. 
Lord, we thank you for this season of Lent that we can prepare our hearts for that journey to the cross. That we can take time to give up stuff or add stuff to our lives that draws us closer to you. That we can focus on you during these days and um, be filled with the hope of who you are. Lord, help us to be intentional and, and look for you and seek you out. We praise you that there are opportunities like church camp to be able to make that choice to go to a more quiet place, a less distracted place and fill our time with praising you with songs and learning about you through your word for being in a place that causes us to withdraw and be able to hear your voice and that we can go and have fun and build relationships with each other and more importantly with you. So we just pray that you work in and through our camping program, that you work in and through the lives of our kids and, and people who are willing to go to camp. And we thank you that camp has been such an important ministry of this church and that this church values it with their time and energy and gifts of money as well. Lord, we just thank you that you walk with us when we have joys and you walk with us when the world is heavy. We just lift up those who are grieving this morning. We think of the family and friends of Lorraine Nystrom and Janet Mickelson Gorud. Lord, we thank you for the gift of the lives that they, they led and um, because we loved them, it hurts to let them go. But we know that they knew you and loved you and we have that hope that they are with you now. But we pray for those who grieve and ask that you wrap them in your almighty arms of comfort and peace. We lift up Bob Lauer as he has confirmed a cancer diagnosis we just pray that as he goes tomorrow to meet with the oncologist that you guide that appointment and you help him to get the best medical care that he can to treat this cancer. We just pray that you strengthen and encourage him. We thank you that Cameron Rise is recovering from his surgery. We just pray that you continue to keep infection away and that he can continue to manage the pain and, and be back to his normal self. Oh Lord, there are so many who are dealing with cancer right now. We lift up Nancy Nelson, Nikki Rabe, Leanne Cooper, and Harlan Bone. We just pray that you are with each one, no matter what um, stage they are in in this battle. We know that some are, are nearing the end of the battle, and we just pray that you are with them and that you hold them close, that you are with their families, and that they can feel your presence in a very real way that you bless the moments they have together and that they realize that they truly are walking on holy ground and that you are with them no matter what. We just pray that you strengthen and encourage each one. We praise you that Esther um, was able to make it through another surgery and we just pray that that continues to be successful and she heals and can recover from that. Lord, there are many on our prayer list and 
many within our congregation or those who are listening and watching who have needs in their hearts. We just pray that you go before them and meet them where they are at. Reassure them that you have plan and purpose in what they are going through and that your ultimate purpose is to draw them near to you. Help us to hold fast to you. We just pray that you continue to work in and through this service. And we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to please stand and sing, Trade in My Sorrows. The words are up on the screen. You may be seated. The scripture lesson this morning is from Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, 
with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This ends the reading of God's word this morning. After timing out my message last night, I decided we're going to incorporate the kids into my sermon, so we're not going to do a formal children's message this morning. Boot camp prepares recruits for all elements of service, physical, mental, and emotional. It gives members the basic tools necessary to perform the roles that will be assigned to them for the duration of their tour. Each of the services has its own training program, tailoring the curriculum to the specialized nature of its role. Basic training is an intense experience. The purpose of this training isn't to break recruits. In fact, the combination of physical training, field exercises, and classroom time makes individuals strong and capable. It's a tough process, but a rewarding one that many members value for life. To succeed in boot camp, you should prepare yourself physically and mentally. You should also practice arriving early on a regular basis. I could learn from that one. And sticking to a strict schedule. You should also delegate personal affairs to family or friends so you can focus on your training. Like boot camp, church camp, wants to challenge us to grow. Boot camp is important because it prepares us on all levels, physical, emotional, spiritual, to be trained and equipped to serve in the way God calls us. It is in the drawing away from life's distractions that we can truly focus on God's calling in our lives. When I was researching boot camp, they had a list of things that they recommended you do not bring to camp. You're not supposed to bring family, pets, expensive personal items, non-prescription drugs, weapons, alcohol, playing cards, dice or dominoes, or tobacco products. As I read through this list, I couldn't help but think that this was a great example of things that can cause us to become distracted from God's calling in our lives, and that we can use those things as an excuse to not serve him. Once we sign up for Christ's boot camp, we are trained in various ways. First, we need to study our enemy. The scripture from this morning describes who our real enemy is. We need God's armor to stand against the tricks of the devil. Note, it says that we are not fighting against human enemies. I think that that's an important reminder. We're not fighting each other. We are fighting against rulers, authorities, forces of cosmic darkness, and spiritual powers of evil in the heavens. We need to know our enemy and how the devil works in order to have a plan in how to stand against him. Next, God supplies us with the armor we need for this battle. 
the Sunday school and Wednesday night kids have been studying the armor of God. And they will sing you a couple of songs. They know the armor and how to use it and what it does for us in battle. So I asked Cami if she would be willing to be a volunteer for the sermon this morning. And she graciously agreed. She's a rock star, aren't ya? Yeah. <laughs> so the first piece of our armor was the belt of truth. And the kids got to actually make the armor. Can we put it on you? And take these pieces home with them, didn't you? Yes. And we learned that we fight evil with truth, right? So the activity that we did that Sunday in learning about truth was that we had the kids walk around and tell each other how great pizza is. Do you remember doing that? Yeah. And while they were walking around the room sh shouting that they liked pizza or what their favorite kind of pizza was, one of the teachers began to pull the kids who were talking very loud into the corner. Those who were put into our fake jail had no problem continuing to talk about pizza. But the ones who hadn't gotten snagged yet got quiet in a hurry. They quit talking about that pizza as soon as they noticed there was a possibility of getting into trouble. Using the story of Peter and his friends getting thrown into jail for talking about Jesus, the kids were asked to host a mock trial to see what they would do themselves to Peter and their friends, didn't we? Yeah. Do you remember what the kids talked about doing to Peter and their friends? I'm putting you on the spot. They were, I don't think they were very nice, were they? They were, bigging out, they were bringing out the big guns, like AK-47s and burning them at the stake. Like, they declared them guilty. Yeah, they weren't showing any mercy. <laughs> In our Bible story, though, thankfully, Peter and his friends were willing to share the truth of Jesus to the people around them, even though they faced being thrown in jail, not just once, but multiple times, and even flogging for talking about Jesus. They counted it as joy to face trials for telling the truth of who Jesus was and what he did for all of us. The belt of the Roman soldier was their identity, which marked who they were. For Christians, the belt also marks who we are, children of the Most High God. Satan loves to fill us with lies. Perhaps he's convinced you of something that you're not. A liar, a failure, a bad parent, an addict, depressed, or any other negative label you can think yourself as. Whatever identity you think you have, if that identity isn't first and foremost beloved child of God, then Satan has tricked you. Believing those lies will keep you from believing God's truth and sharing God's truth with others. We struggle with what is truth today. Our opinions have way more weight to them than truth. Only when we turn to God's word and weigh every thought, word, and action against the word of God can we fully walk in truth. Next, the kids learned about the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. Very good. 
And what did we think, what did we say righteousness was? Do you remember? That we're gonna do the, do the right thing. Yes. But our lesson taught us that that isn't always the case. So we asked the kids, what is one thing that you would never do in church? Do you remember what we talked about? What was something that we would not do in church? Don't say swear words. Don't say swear words. That was the popular one. Yep. They also talked about don't run in church, right? Or don't tell a lie. And then they were asked, do you ever do that outside of church? Yes. Yes. Most people said yes. Most people said yes. Yep. Some said no, yep. A lot of people might behave one way at church, but another way outside of church. Mm -hmm. Looking at the way they behave at church, you would probably consider them being righteous. But sometimes we have to get to the heart of righteousness. So we did an activity that morning, which I thought was a pretty powerful one. So I think we should do it for people today. Do you think we should? Yeah. Yeah. So we had four bags that we filled up with stuff that looks like righteousness, right? So in the first bag, we talked about that in Bible times, the people would wear boxes on their arms that contain scripture. And we do something like that today to some degree. We'll wear a cross necklace or we'll have t-shirts that advertise um, what we believe in, right? So I have a little bracelet here and we put the bracelet, do you wanna put it in the bag for me? All right, perfect. Then we also looked at a world map because people go out as missionaries and tell the world, I gotta blow up my candles. They melted. I think that was a God moment right there. We, we could uh, leave it to me to burn the church down. <laughs> okay, here we go. Missionaries. <laughs> we, we, send, we go out as missionaries to the world to tell people about Jesus, right? Yep. yep. When we try not to burn down the church. Yep. All right, you want to. <laughs> then. <laughs> oh, goodness, I hope Tom wasn't watching that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then people are people of their word. If they say, I promise, they follow through with what they say. So we put I promise in the next bag. And then last, we put money in our last bag because people will give financially to the church, right? And that's important because we need people to give financially to the church. And then we had the kids take a ball. Yeah. Yeah, maybe two balls. Yeah, we, had, we formed two lines so everybody could have a turn. And we took the ball and we threw it at the bags. And the bags didn't hold up too well because downstairs they really went after them with the balls, didn't they? And we had the bags totally knocked over. Are you gonna knock one over? Just use your hand. Just go through and knock them over. There we go. Those things didn't stand up very well, did they? No, they didn't. All right. But our scripture lesson, in looking in Matthew, Jesus taught about these types of people. And he used some pretty harsh words to describe these people. Do you remember the word that he used in our version? Pretenders. pretenders. He called them pretenders. Nobody wants to be a pretender, do we? No. 
He called them legal experts and hypocrites. Jesus warns people not to be whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead bones and all kinds of filth. So then we took Bibles, Bibles and put them in the bag. We'll just do one bag this morning. Okay. Does that sound okay? So we put God's word in the bags. Because if we're filled with God's word, what happened to the bags when we threw the balls? They didn't budge. They didn't budge. They stood firm, didn't they? Yes. And so that's the difference between acting righteous and having a heart of righteousness, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which is pretty cool. If the belt of truth is about knowing who you are in Christ, the breastplate of righteousness is about living a life that reflects the truth you know. After putting on the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness, you can just hold these. Right? We then put shoes on our feet so that we could be ready to spread the good news of peace. Our Bible story for this lesson was Jesus praying in the garden with his friends. The soldiers came to take Jesus away. Peter responded by cutting the ear off of one of the guards. So we acted the story out. I brought a lightsaber from home and I pretended to cut off the ear of one of our kids. And one of our leaders had a paper towel that I had put red paint on and they had held it against that kid's ear. And then she pulled it away from the kid's ear. It was a grown up, you're right. And one of our kids like was, you could see they were sick to their stomach <laughs> watching this happen. They did not know if it was real or fake. Like you could that just, was it was you? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't gonna point any fingers, but. <laughs> so, so we kind of had to reassure you that it was just a stage. We weren't really doing that. Yeah, me too. We're not about doing that, are we? If only our hearts could respond like Cammie's. Instead of being desensitized to the violence around us, what if we lived genuinely appalled by the lack of peace in the world that we live in. When faced with this battle, Peter thought the battle was against flesh and blood, against the people who'd come to arrest Jesus. He thought he could fight the battle with violence. But Jesus knew we fight evil with peace. And this was a battle against evil not a few people with swords and torches. This was the battle he'd win by dying on the cross to beat death and sin. Using the story of Noah, the kids discovered what faith is all about when we, use, when we utilize the shield of faith. When we ponder what it honestly must have been like for Noah to use his faith in building an ark in the middle of dry land, it's preposterous. He would have looked like a total fool. However, Noah believed God and lived out his faith in obedience to what God called him to do. Can you imagine what would have happened if even Noah hadn't believed God? All would have perished and the story would have ended there. Thank goodness we have countless examples of people not only in scripture but in our own lives who live out their faith 
to encourage us to live likewise. The helmet of salvation is another piece of God's important armor. Our minds are powerful things which can dictate much of our lives. If we allow Satan a foothold in our thoughts, we get further from God's truth and begin to doubt the gift of salvation offered to us through Jesus. God's enemy wants to trick us into thinking salvation means figuring out some sort of code at being perfect. But salvation is so much simpler than that. There is no tricky code to figure out. Salvation is believing in and loving Jesus. When we know that, then we can fight evil with salvation. Last, we have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's interesting to note that the sword is the only piece of armor that is offensive in offensive, sorry, it can be offensive too, in nature. The rest of the pieces are defensive, meant to protect us not only on a physical level, but emotional and spiritual as well. The sword, however, is our best offense to anything Satan may throw at us. God's word is powerful enough to go up against anything that comes against it. The kids studied how Jesus was tempted in the desert. He had gone 40 days without food. Oh, I would have been miserably hungry, tired, and probably weak. Jesus, however, was very wise, and the devil couldn't tempt him to turn away from God. Jesus was tempted. Do you remember what he was tempted to do? Jump off a temple. Yeah, the devil tried to get him to jump off the temple, right? And have the angels keep him from falling to his death. And then we had bread that he was supposed to turn stones into bread, right? And the last, we had the mountaintops where Satan said, if you bow down to me and worship me, you can rule all that you can see, right? Yep. However, Jesus used the mighty word of God to fight against each of Satan's temptations. There is power in God's word. I was reading through a couple of ideas that could maybe help us to use scripture. One was to spend time reading scripture. Instead of reading a set number of verses or chapters, read until the Holy Spirit makes a verse really stand out to you. Write that verse down and carry it with you for the rest of the day. Pull it out to read periodically and refocus your mind on what God is trying to show you in the passage. Or we can try to memorize verses that can help you fight against the specific attacks Satan is coming at you with. Look at her armor. If you struggle with self-esteem, memorize a verse that reminds you, you are God's child. Say you worry a lot. Memorize a verse that reminds you God is in control and there's no need to worry. Then when Satan is whispering lies in your ear, say your verse back to him and tell him to go away. Using God's armor is the only way we can stand our ground on the evil day. The days seem to be increasingly evil. Our country, our church, our families are being divided. Now more than ever, we need to be willing to take a stand for God and live out our faith. I love how Central is so supportive of our camping program. 
I believe that camp is a great training ground for our soldiers of the cross. At camp, we are given the opportunity to put aside the distractions of this world and withdraw to a place that allows us to focus on God. They're freed, they're fed with the truths of God's word to equip them to be faithful followers of Christ. For many people, camp is a place where they make that decision to ask Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. God speaks into the hearts of campers to guide and direct where he may be calling them to serve. Camp is vital to the life of the church and the lives of believers because it offers great opportunities for growth in our relationships with Jesus and each other. It brings us to a place of quiet so we can hear God speak to us and shows us that following Christ can actually be fun. We need to be willing to enlist in God's boot camp so that we can be fully equipped to love and serve him. Thank you, Cammie. You make a marvelous model. You want to take it off? I don't know what's going on, but we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> Would you please join me in our responsive prayer of confession? Maybe we'll read it out of the bulletin. Spirit of God, we confess that we put on airs more often than we put on the armor of God. We are guilty of girding ourselves with lies instead of the truth. We try to protect ourselves with arrogance, superstition, and self-reliance instead of righteousness, faith, and your gift of salvation. Our footsteps do not follow your path of peace. And we are quick to use your word to attack one another instead of striking out against the sins we personally commit. Forgive us, holy God. Give us the wisdom and strength to change our ways so that we may live as your faithful ambassadors of the good news. Amen. I invite you to please stand and join in singing the doxology. Please join me for our unison offertory prayer. God, our hearts overflow with thanksgiving to you. You are infinitely good to us. Your creation is so magnificent. It gives us pleasure and supplies our needs for food and water and light and warmth. And you have supplied salvation through Jesus. You supply our spiritual needs through communion with you, through our spiritual armor, our spiritual gifts, and your indwelling Holy Spirit. Accept these tithes and offerings we give you today as a thank offering for your immeasurable blessings. Amen. You may be seated. 
At this time, the, I invite the kids to come forward. They're going to share with you the songs they have been learning about the armor of God. And uh, they sing one super well. The other one, they like to move and dance. And so I asked them on Wednesday, are you willing to move and dance in front of everybody? And they said, yes. <laughs> they told me yes on Wednesday. So we might have to offer them grace because I know it's hard to get up in front of people and do this. So we're going to start out by singing the full armor of God. the belt of truth put on my boots gotta tell the good news the armor of God and the shield of faith got my sword and my helmet now it's time to pray Things first, you got the bell to truth. Ayo, ayo. Put on my boots, I gotta tell the good news. Ayo, ayo. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Ayo, ayo. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. Ayo, ayo. Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. Put on. We can stand, stand, stand against every evil plan, plan, plan. Now it's time to be strong, strong, strong. He has won. I put on the full armor of God. Stand strong against the evil one. I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. I put on the full armor of God. Stand strong against the evil one. I put on. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Put on your armor guy. Put on your armor guy. Put on your armor guy. You got your armor guy. Got, got my belt of truth check. Breast plate of righteousness. Shoes of peace. Shield of faith. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the spirit. Helmet of salvation. Oh my God. 
armor god. You got your armor god. Put on your armor god. You got your armor god. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. The strength takes care of you when life is sour. Put on the armor god and fight the enemy. Can you tell me now all the pieces you need? Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. The strength takes care of you when life is sour. Shoes of peace, shield of pain, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit. Put on your armor, God. You got your armor, God. Put on your armor, God. You got your armor, God. Put on your armor, God. You got your armor, God. Put on your armor, God. You got your armor, God. Are you ready? Good, I'm impressed. They do wiggle a little bit more downstairs, but you can see some pretty good moves. Yeah. So, go forth, because you do have the armor of God to stand firm, don't we? Mm-hmm. Amen. All right. Go have fun. At the